people want to play Nintendo Stock Hunt using a Zappa controller in the current day and age without relying on a CRT monitor. I have Corrid Modern Mallard, which was the first solution for LCD displays in episode 88. Later came the so called NES LCD mod project, which was inspired by Modern Mallard. In episode 98, I supported the project with an open gun design and instructions on how to make existing light guns LCD compatible. In 2019, Hyperkin licensed the NES LCD mod software and offered own hardware, which I covered in episode 162. The current episode is about a Famiclone gun to USB adapter, which lets users play NES LCD mod patched games on PC using the emulator FCU. This setup is supported since October 2020. Furthermore, I will evaluate a cheap light sensor board and test its application in a Zapper type light gun. The Famiclone gun to USB adapter is the brainchild of Jason W. Thompson and Alexei Evdukin, who goes with the username Cluster Meerkat. Alexei uses a Teensy at Mega 32U4 microprocessor board. Trigger and light readings are translated to basic joypad button presses and sent to the computer. The firmware and a schematic diagram are available on the NES LCD mod project page. An additional 4.7 kilo ohms pull up resistor is used, and I can confirm that the built in 40 kilo ohms resistor alone is not enough to make the adapter work. In my mind, this pull up resistor is the reason why gun and monitor compatibility will rise a lot, and I recommend to replace it with a 1 to 11 kilo ohms potentiometer setup. When relying on the 4.7 kilo ohms resistor instead, there is some interesting discrepancy going on between FCO, the original Zapper, and Cluster Meerkat's firmware. The Zapper's trigger is normally high. The light pin is high when a lit screen is seen and low if the gun doesn't sense light. The current version of FCO works the same way and expects its monitored input to be high for light on events and low for no light events. In contrast, the adapter will give a narrow signal once a change in light conditions is registered. For the 4.7 kilo ohms resistor, my adapter stuck to no voltage on the light line while idle and voltage upon light condition changes. Therefore, I had to remove the light data inversion in Cluster Meerkat's firmware to make the adapter work. Since the release of the original adapter, a version using a DigiSpark, which is a at Tiny85 based microcontroller board, has been published by R57Zone on GitHub. Those microcontrollers are even cheaper and thus a compelling alternative. The firmware of R57Zone lacks the inversion of the light signal. As both microcontroller boards are programmed to make use of the built in pull up resistor, there is a difference in sensitivity among the two. Personally, I went with the Teensy and put it into a generic soap box, into which I made recesses for NES, DE9 and DE15 sockets. This allows me full NES, Famiclone and Famicom compatibility. Of note is the terrible quality of third-party NES controller sockets. Using those, I struggled with bad connection quality during the roll video. If for some reason good quality sockets must be used, I guess there is nothing left than to scavenge original consoles. I used FCE version 2.3.0 for this episode, but in principle every version going forward should be compatible. The microcontroller feeds the computer with gamepad inputs mapped to button 1 for the trigger and button 2 for the light signal. Jason W. Thompson introduced the LCD Zapper input variant to FCE, which pays attention to those two joystick inputs and translates them to trigger and light states. Remember, there are just two reasons why real Zappos didn't work on LCD screens. The Zapper filters for 15 kHz light and thus won't pick up much differently modulated light. This is circumvented by omitting the filtering step. The second issue is the comparably high latency of LCD TVs. The game expects a low latency display and sets its light detection timings accordingly. The NES LCD mod patches the ROM to insert custom delays into the detection to accommodate for the video lag. But now on a PC it's easier to hook up a display in an almost lag-free manner, which completely removes the necessity of setting up a delay. 
I can play the patched version of Duck Hunt with the delay dialed to 0.0 milliseconds and it still works charmingly. This motivated me to try out a non-patched ROM to see whether it works too. Initially this failed, but after setting the emulator up in an authentic fashion and adjusting the resistance to 3.7 kilo ohms, with the built-in pull-up disabled and inversion intact, I was able to play Duck Hunt. I'm sure the emulator can be set up better still by adjusting the video synchronization and whatnot, but as a first experiment I'm satisfied. Furthermore, in hindsight I would use a potentiometer with a lower range or a nice wire round one, as the sweet spot is very narrow. It seems that the non-patched ROM is very stringent with its requirement on the raw light signals, while the NES LCD mod patched game is more forgiving. When using the patched ROM, the overall gun compatibility of the adapter was good. I achieved best results with the Gun Con 2 looking light gun of the virtual station, but all my LCD compatible Famiclone guns work to some degree. When using my own potentiometer based guns, I ran into difficulties though. Normally, on a console, I can overdial sensitivity and go back until hit detection works as intended. For some reason, this routine didn't really work on the PC adapter, as curiously, dialing sensitivity too high caused hit detection to cease. This made the process fiddly and I ended up setting sensitivity on a console and then keep the potentiometer where it is in order to use the gun on PC. After swapping the adapter's pull-up resistor by a potentiometer as described above, the compatibility to my modified guns increased greatly. I'm still very excited about the wall zapper on LCD topic and besides improving compatibility I wanted to lower the barrier of entry. Even though the gun modifications I'm suggesting are simple, this little soldering might already be too much for non-enthusiasts. Therefore I looked around for alternative sources of sensor boards. On Ally Express I found cheap light sensor boards, which are all to be used with microcontrollers for Tinker projects. Two of these can be acquired for as low as one US dollar. Sadly, when doing tests with them, I realized that the signal they are outputting is just the opposite from what an S needs. Thus we are required to invert the light signal, which puts the original intention of a hassle-free board into the gutter unfortunately. For the inversion, I use my go-to NPN transistor, which is the 2N3904. On the board itself is a SMD wire round potentiometer. It being wire round would theoretically be a good thing, because those have more travel and can therefore be set up more precisely. However, the used piece doesn't have a tactile start and stop position and will simply continue to roll over without further changing resistance. This makes the dial-in process unnecessarily cumbersome. I would understand if someone would prefer to swap the potentiometer for another model. Anything can be a light gun. To exemplify this, I chose to use a can of beer, a lighter and a cherry snap action switch. Everything is held together by duct tape. Using a lens would be the best case scenario, but to keep it simple I just built a lightproof aperture, which increases precision at sufficiently bright displays such as CRTs. To do so, I taped aluminium foil to a sheet of paper and wrapped it to a tube. It worked surprisingly well. When using dimmer LCD displays however, a lens is highly recommended and without one, a barrel definitely takes away too much light. To quickly test the cheap sensor board with the USB adapter, I therefore removed the barrel for better results. Potentiometer guns in general were more finicky to dial in on the original PC adapter design. Setting up the Ally Express board with its start and stopless potentiometer isn't a great experience. Overall, I'm very happy that Zappos on modern displays is still a thing and I'm very grateful for the recently added PC compatibility. Hopefully, the proposed changes get picked up by the community and the project will now, with its enhanced compatibility, take off and spread more widely. This is the end of the video. My name is Ben. I thank you for viewing.